village in 1692, many accusations were made against innocent citizens, both male and female alike. Some blamed this mass hysteria on disease, yet others believed it was early America's governmental system. Still others claimed it was feuds amongst the Salem citizens that were taken too far. In the 17th century New England, everyone believed in witchcraft. Ministers, college presidents, the most devout believed in witches. So imagine the situation if you were living in 1692. We know that witches are real. We know that they can harm you, they can kill your family, they can destroy your home, they can destroy your crops. Their goal is to completely eliminate your government and to eliminate the church that you believe in. We should try to stop them. Great. How can we do that? We don't know what they look like. They could be anybody. They could be a neighbor. Uh, they could be your best friend. Um, but we have to try to find them. So let's, let's see. Maybe it's someone who looks a little different than you. Maybe it's someone who has an ax for an accent. Maybe it's someone who seems to worship God a little different than you, or is not regular in their attendance upon Sabbath. Maybe it's someone who acts strangely. Well, I think the bottom line is, if you replace the word terrorist with witch, you'll understand exactly the problems that people faced in 1692. The Salem Witch Trials of 1692 were a direct result of the fear of Satan and religious weakness. Like, uh, uh, like the perfect storm, it took a combination of many, many, many factors to cause the largest outbreak of witchcraft in American history. In 1692 and 1693, in the small town of Salem Village, Massachusetts Bay Colony, the third largest witch hunt in history took place. This town, founded on by Puritans, was a quaint fishing community prior to the trial. Many of the victims were falsely accused of witchcraft, merely for being outcasts in the village. The trials began with a group of young girls gossiping about their future, perfectly normal for their age. Soon after, these girls began acting strange, having violent, agonizing, epileptic-like fits. I don't have any problem believing that the first girls are um, some um, variant of um, what we might call mass hysteria, where people are not faking in any way. They can have physical symptoms like temporary deafness or uh, paralysis or, or uh, um, uh, all kinds of strange fits and uh, is completely beyond their control. They're not acting out, they're not trying to get attention. Um, they're, they're, they've just been taken over by this mass psychosis. This consisted of Abigail, William, Betty, Paris, and more. The two girls were close relatives of the controversial Rev Reverend Paris. The Reverend had the girls examined by a local doctor and upon finding them in perfect health, deemed their issue to be witchcraft. The girls were then interrogated by Mr. Paris, and after further persuasion, they divulged the name of an easy target, Paris' slave, Kidbuck. Reverend Paris is central to the Salem Witch Trials. He's one of the two or three people I see who um, the trials would not have taken place if he were not involved in the way he did. Um, I consider Samuel Paris to be a professional failure in life. Mm -hmm. He fails pretty much at everything he tries to do. 1692, this is a very remote, poor community. It can't afford to pay its minister very much. It's uh, Paris and his failures in life and his personalities that will lead him to be really looking uh, throughout the community uh, for witches. Throughout time and place, throughout history, in Europe, in the Americas, elsewhere, about 80 percent, anywhere from 75 to 80 percent of people accused of witchcraft are women. As long as we have um, prejudice and bigotry and hatred, we're going to have witches. We're going to have people we scapegoat and then we turn into witches of one kind or another. Um, Because the town did not want the slightest sign of the devil in it, almost all that were accused were charged and killed by various methods, methods such as burning, hanging, and pressing. Others were abolished from Salem, and still others were able to flee. The idea of, of you know, probably people being sleep deprived, being constantly interrogated, mm -hmm. being kept in a really uh, foul jail, and it really sort of seems that there's the atmosphere here that is very encouraging to, to sort of forcing people uh, mm -hmm. to confess. That it, so um, they're looking for more names. So it's not enough to confess. I think we're 
much as contributed to the trials in a way that would be almost, you'd almost be unable to separate how religion played a part. The most important factor that have been overlooked can often be religion. Um, most of the historians who studied witchcraft tend to look at social issues that cause witchcraft. But the bottom line is, witchcraft is a religious crime. Uh, if you look at a lot of the people accused of witchcraft, a lot of these factors, it seems to be, comes back to the relationship between the Salem Village Church and Reverend Paris and these outsiders who are not part of their religious community. Um, is a complete inversion of what is good in, in, in society. Witchcraft in America is, is, is very similar to what's going on in Europe. And you have to realize, too, by that sense, the outbreak in Salem is smart, small scale by European standards. In Europe in the 16th and 17th century, you'd have outbreaks of witchcraft where two or three hundred people would be put to death in a, in a several month period. As Roger Thompson said in his 1972 article, Salem Revisited in Journal of American Studies, witchcraft has now become serialized in part works featured in color supplements in the glossier women's magazines. In recent years, witches have been portrayed as good and evil characters with a slight tendency to the evil side. Um, no witches were burned, uh, no, no, no one convicted for witchcraft in the United States or in England yeah. were, were, were burnt at the stake. A common misperception that people were, were, were burnt at the stake for witchcraft in Salem, and that was never the case. There were serious problems going on in the colony. And witchcraft was an easy explanation for that. Who are you looking to blame? Well, we, maybe we should blame the government for its failed policies. Oh, we're the government. Maybe we should blame our military leaders for failing to defend the colony. Oh, we are high-ranking military officers. It's so easy for people to look outward for solutions to their problems and for people to blame rather than first kind of having a serious sort of look inward and saying, wow, to what degree might, have, might, might I have brought this on, my, on myself? I'd like to think that at some point it would all make sense, but I don't know if that'll be in my lifetime or yours, uh, which is what makes this thing also interesting too.